This is part three of four on Antoine Gomez, a.k.a. OG Silverback here on YouTube. He was sent to us by Master Sergeant, retired YouTube channel. The link to that will be in our description section, along with the links to the other parts of this series. The last video, part four, has his excuse for pretending to be Special Forces, along with a terrible apology and also our phone conversation with him. Victories on Silverback Gorillas. That's how they fight, dude. They, they pound down on their victims and they growl. That's my opening. I'm an OG Silverback Gorilla. And just so you know how I came up with that nomaker, all my homies, like, <laughs> like my gangster homies, like, so I got, I got three types of associates, and I just want to be honest with you. I got my military brothers, dude. Like, we've been in the combat together. And then some of those guys, man, they understood what happened to me that got me into the street life. They understood because back in the 80s, the military that I was part of, dude, I mean, do documentaries. There's documentaries on the military from Vietnam era to World War I, World War II, all the way up, dude. And there's always been, there's a lot of soldiers addicted to alcohol, heroin, and cocaine, and, and drugs, bro. It just so happened the political agenda that was taking place when Kuwait happened, the, the military came up with a no um, a no tolerance policy for drugs. I got caught in that. I'm a political victim, bro. And so that's that's how why I got kicked out. If it had not have been for Kuwait, they would have just had me in a drug treatment program, dude. There's a lot of military dudes. For those of guys that don't know, man, dude, start start educating yourself, man, or just lay down here at the feet of the master. Start listening because I'm not. My medication is starting to kick in, man. So I'm happy right now, man. So, uh, yeah, so that's what happened to me, man. Like, um, you know, I got caught up in the politics of the time. And so, like, half of the military dudes understand because they they know I was a real beast mode soldier. I'm in therapy for being a disabled vet. I have nightmares of my body count, dude, like in combat, man. That's why I never understood why gang members just didn't join the army. Like this, this is the part that cracked me up, man. Like when it, the United States has a war, like a full grown war, a full blown out war. If you hard, dude, and you tough, just join the military. You get a, you get a license to kill. Here's the problem, man. Everybody wants to be a killer, but nobody wants to die. But here's me guys. I'm stupid. If a person disrespects me, man, or a person wants to harm me, dude, I am ready to die because I'm not going to live in fear. Do you understand me? And yeah, this is what my brother said. Hey, man, there's always somebody bigger and crazier than you, Vato Loco, OG Silverback. It's always, yeah, that's true. But if the dude wants to disrespect me, then guess what? Today is a good day to die because guess what, homie? I don't care how strong you are, how bad you are, dude. When it comes down to life or death situations, yeah, you might take my left. You might take my life, but listen to this. I'm taking yours too. Because in, in a dying situation, man, you got anywhere from two to five minutes. And whatever you did to me, I'm going to do it to you. So my best advice, if you're a hard ass, you might want to get a sniper rifle from miles away or maybe a grenade or maybe a rocket launcher or, or maybe a mortar. But you want to come up in my face whether you got a gun or a knife, Holmes? You lost your mind, man, because I don't give a shit. I'm not living in fear of anybody. So then this is a problem, dude. My therapist says to me, hey, you should tell your story because sometimes, you know, he said you should get a trusted friend where you can tell your stories because I have nightmares, dude. I wake up, man, with nightmares. I got PTSD, dude. I wake up with murderous thoughts, bro. That's why I can't keep a relationship. I can't keep a woman, bro, because most women aren't built for what happens when I wake up screaming. And I'm striking out. I'm just, I got nightmares, man. Like the horrors that I've seen, the horror. Do you understand the gruesome horror, dude? And I need help. So my therapist goes, hey, man, you should just go ahead and uh, get a trusted friend and, and tell your story. So YouTube is my story, man. I'm out here telling you guys my truth because how can you have therapy and cleansing if you don't tell your truth? My therapist was like, you got to tell your complete story with all the gore to release your inner demons and clear your karmic debt. And that's what I'm here to do, guys. I don't have time to embellish, tell you fictional stories, and make up shit. And here's how you know, man. Like, let me tell you something, man. 
The truth shall set you free, but there's a cost. When I made these videos, let me tell you something, man. I got homies that's in, I got homies to this day that's in the game, homie. I got guys that I know from this area that are in the game, and they question, they question where I'm coming from because first of all, they didn't know. Like I'm not from here, homie. And so yeah, I built associations from being in the game out here. I was a bouncer, I was a bodyguard. So of course, I met some people, I befriended some people, but they're from here. I asked them to do research on the amount and the types of weapons that I had in the car, on my person, and in the trunk all three times that I got arrested to get a complete understanding of my mental fuckery history. Because he who does not know and fully understand the mentality it takes to get these types of weapons, which only a stupid, sick fuck of an animal would steal from a military base, will suffer the realization all too late when their spirit is leaving their bodies that they are not as hard mean, tough, and sadistically skilled as they have deluded themselves for decades, all these years that they are, and it will be too late for them to have any get back. And for those of you who are confused, ignorant, or just a plain stupid dumb fuck, let me clarify for you and everyone listening. Back in the 80s, the United States Army I was in that paid 1500 a month, which caused me to work as a bouncer, doorman, bodyguard, chauffeur, for which paid me upwards of 200 to $2,000 a day, depending on the client and the job I regularly bought any and all types of weapons, explosives, ammo, gas masks, and chemical suits that the military would allow me to purchase at the Army Gun and Weapons Store on base, where we would buy and own guns, weapons, and explosive equipment that civilians could not. And based on the coaching calls I get from the guys currently in the military now, it is not like that currently in the Army. Don't forget to check out the links to the other parts of this series in our description section.